Welcome to the LSU Sports Insider. Brought to you, the brought to you, we're off to a great start. Welcome to the LSU Sports Insider. Brought to brought to you by the journalists at the Advocate, NOLA.com and the Times Picayune. Here in Keys on the left side of your screen, if you're watching here on YouTube, along with Scott Rabelais, who's coming to you from an undisclosed location in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, i.e., his hotel room looks like, uh, yes. where he is going to get ready. Uh, to watch the LSU gymnastics team, see if they cannot close it out and uh, claim their first national title in program history. The semifinals get a, get underway at 3.30 p.m. That should say Thursday. Uh, and the championships are going to be at 3 p.m. Saturday. We expect that LSU will make it through uh, to the championships. We will get into that. We will also get into, of course, Rab's favorite place, the happiest place on earth. Uh, his trip to Augusta, what he saw there, why he uh, why he believes that Sam Burns, former LSU golfer Sam Burns, uh, can't quite seem to get over the hump there uh, in in Augusta, uh, as well as of course we will touch on the uh, LSU baseball team as well. But uh, but first things first, this is all gymnastics all the time. The time is upon us. Uh, as I said, it should be uh, three thirty p.m. Thursday, not three uh, thirty p.m. Saturday. For the semifinals, and you just then kind the of put it all together, right? Yeah, yeah. I did. I, I botched it. I, I, I will fess up to it. And Saturday's uh, on ABC. The finals are that's on correct. ABC. The championships are uh, three o'clock on Saturday on ABC uh, on the big network, and so uh, it should be quite a show. And as I said, we expect uh, we expect LSU to make the championships, and we'll get into that. Though, Rab, how are you? Uh, road weary, I'm sure. A little bit. Got a good night's sleep last night, uh, so um, I'm ready to, ready to go today. It's going to be a hot one here in Fort Worth. And then typical Texas weather, it's like 90 degrees today, and tomorrow's going to be like 60, you know, 60 something. <laughs> so. Well, you know, you can warm the cockles with some Taco Cabana, you know, if you stop mm -hmm. off there somewhere on the side of the freeway. Uh, I know everybody else would choose a, a finer, more authentic no, no, no. taco, taco but I'm a sicko. Taco Cabana is very good. Very good. Yes, I, I agree. Uh, a, a little bit of business, as always, uh, to start off the program here. Uh, if you're watching or if you're tuning in and listening, uh, you know that the Advocate's always been the number one destination for all things LSU sports, uh, as evidenced by the fact that Rab is in Fort Worth to cover the LSU gymnastics team as they hunt down a national championship. So please subscribe to the Advocate if you haven't already. Uh, it's the easiest thing to do in the world. Uh, you can uh, you can subscribe whether it's print or digital. You go to theadvocate.com slash subscribe uh, and sign up there. Also, please, uh, while you're perusing theadvocate.com, Sign up for our LSU newsletter. Uh, you know, there's plenty, as, as we always say, there's plenty going on in the spring semester. Really always plenty going on uh, at any point uh, between, say, August and late May or early June, depending on how the baseball and softball teams do. Uh, and there's plenty to get your arms around and try to keep it all straight. So you can get uh, all the headlines delivered to your inbox uh, with the LSU newsletter. So to sign up, you go to the Advocate dot com slash LSU newsletter. Uh, we are here every Monday and Thursday on the LSU Sports Insider on all our channels, but specifically the YouTube channel, LSU Tigers on the .com. Uh, Please go to uh, LSU Tiger or please search for LSU Tigers on the .com on YouTube. That way you can find our channel. You can subscribe. You can catch us live there every Monday and Thursday. If you don't catch us live, uh, you can still catch us on that same YouTube channel after the fact. Uh, so please subscribe there. Uh, and if you don't get, uh, if you like to get your uh, podcast in a little bit more traditional way, of course, we are an Apple podcast, Spotify, wherever other finer podcasts are found. Just search for LSU Sports Insider. So uh, speaking of which, Rab, uh, we'll lay out. Well, first things first, let's uh, let's let's talk a little bit about uh, just the LSU gymnastics season. Uh, you said really since way before the season began, even almost as late as last or excuse me, almost as early as last summer that this had the potential to be one of the better LSU gymnastics teams that they've had, which is quite a mouthful in the past 10 or 15 years, uh, considering all the great athletes they've had come through here and the great teams they've had come through here. Uh, and, you know, started off looking, looking as such, got a little rocky at some points, and yet here they are at the end of the season exactly where we thought they might be. Just take us through the season a little bit, if you would. Yeah, I mean, the... You started the season, you know, they're predicted to be in the top five, you know, with some great gymnasts coming back. You know, they suffered through a lot of injuries last year. You know, they lost Kaya Johnson to an Achilles injury early in the year. She decided to come back for, for a fifth season. Uh, and so that, that bolstered their chances. And then uh, 
you know, they, they just had brought, brought back a lot of experience to blended with a couple of, you know, really talented newcomers like Connor McLean and Amari Drayton. And they've been tremendous just about all year long. You know, maybe a bit of a slow start as they often get off to, but they've had nine scores uh, over 198. And that, that's, that's the threshold for like, oh, you've had really had a good meet, you know, 198 or, or above. And th- just throughout the season, just really, uh, you know, had a lot of highlights. They, they, they set the uh, program record for uh, the best score, uh, 198.475 in a meet against Arkansas in February. They finished second in the regular season to uh, to Florida. They stubbed their two at Missouri, a uh, meet they shouldn't have lost. Otherwise, they would have shared that title. But then they came back at the uh, SEC championship meet at the Smoothie King Center in March and won that title uh, for the first time since 2019. And then and just had a lot of tremendous performances. Uh, Haley Bryant was the all-around and vault champion. Kaya Johnson and KJ Johnson helped share the floor title. Actually, Cowan won bars. Connor McLean had a perfect 10 on beam. Go to the regional in, uh, in Fayetteville as the top seed, the number two national seed, win there. And now they're here uh, as the top seed in their in their semifinal. And, uh, you know, just uh, Haley Bryant, for one, talks a lot about doing our normal, doing, doing their normal gymnastics. Normal gymnastics for LSU means uh, very good, you know, being one of the best in the country. And they do their normal today. And it's gymnastics. You, you never know how things can go. But uh, if they do the normal uh, on Thursday, they should be into the finals. And then then you've got a shot at the program's, you said, first national title. They've, they've been the runner-up four times uh, in their history. Uh, been very close a bunch of times. Uh, but uh, the, they, uh, but this, is, this is their best chance. I think this is their best team since 2017 when you had uh, Sarah Finnegan and Ashley Nat, who, of course, is now as an assistant coach. And... Uh, uh, Maya Hambrick and uh, McKenna Kelly, and uh, you know they, they, they were just tremendously talented and, and experienced, and that's what you see this year with the likes of of Haley Bryant and Kaya Johnson and Aaliyah Finnegan, Sarah's younger sister, and then the, the newcomers like I mentioned, McLean and, um, and and Cowan and and KJ Johnson has been tremendous on the floor. So uh, a lot of depth, a lot of uh, and Olivia Dunn. Let's not mention, let's not forget Olivia Dunn, who has competed more this year than she did last year really has contributed in in some some spots so uh, an excellent team um but uh you know uh you know no guarantees how they will do and certainly the as as jay clark likes to say the head coach you can't play defense in gymnastics you can only do your best you can't do anything about what the other teams do and uh so that's where they find themselves going into this uh, national semifinal can't hear you. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Uh, you did make mention, I'm sorry, Rab. Uh, you did make mention, obviously, that they uh, suffered through so many injuries last year. But but this is a, reach, a repeat trip uh, to, to Nationals. Uh, they right. did make it through uh, to the semif- through the semifinals last year and through to the finals. Now, we didn't, full disclosure here, the advocate didn't send anybody last year, frankly, because we never say never and miracles happen in sports all the time. But we felt fairly confident that, uh, that they just – as valiant an effort as they did, as they made, and it was a, as gritty an effort as you'll ever see, you know, the entire, the entirety of last season, really considering all the injuries, but also just to get through the semifinals and through to the finals, there was very, very, very minute chance that they were going to make it through and, and win the championship. And so we didn't have anybody there. We had somebody on site, but not somebody on staff who was on site, uh, just making sure that we had our bases covered uh, on the chance that that did happen. But, but this, this time is different. Uh, this time is different. LSU is the is the uh, I guess the number two favorite would be the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they are an underdog to Oklahoma. Oklahoma is what you would consider to be a prohibitive favorite, but this is not out of the realm of possibility. In part because, okay, yes, you never know what may happen in a meet, but also because this is a doggone talented LSU team that has broken some records along the way, not just number of perfect tens and things of that nature, but team records, team scores, things of that nature. Correct, Rep? Yeah. I mean, yeah, they, they've, like I said, they had their best score ever in that meet against uh, Arkansas. Uh, Haley Bryant set a record of the meet down at the River Center, uh, set, set a program record for um, uh, the best score in the all-around. And, of course, she's, she's the nation's leader in um, perfect tens, active leader with 18. And uh, she's, she's one of 14 gymnasts to complete the career, career slam 
she's she, the career slam and the season slam. She's had perfect tens in all four events this year, and all and perfect tens for all four events in her career, which is 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 rare. And uh, and the winning the SEC title is uh, like it's not the NCAA title, but it's a very it, it, when you're beating the likes of Florida and Alabama and, uh, and Kentucky, who is very good this year, and and uh, those teams, you, you you've done something, and, and so that's uh, it's it's been a banner year. And as Jay Clark said to us yesterday, uh, it, it's been a championship season. Whatever happens here, they are a championship team, and winning the SEC and getting to nationals. Uh, this is like making it to the College World Series or the Women's College World Series. You're in that that final eight, and you're trying to advance from here to that that very last meet on Saturday. But but this is this is the equivalent of that. So they've gotten this far, and that's that's their, and just like with the College World Series, once you get there, it's it's kind of you know you know who knows what what what, what could happen. It's a crapshoot. So that that's kind of the situation you're here in now. But but they really had a great season. Confident, they've gotten through with with, with minimal uh, number of injuries. Uh, a lot of confidence, a lot of experience, and uh, that's what gives them a shot at that that uh, that first title. Won't be easy. Oklahoma is uh, you know the two-time reigning national champion, and uh, they're they're favorite again. They, they've won six overall in the last ten years, and just just a dynasty. And of course, they're coming to the SEC next year. But uh, they but they're, they're the team to beat. But uh, I've seen it before. I, there was one meet here one year pairing here in Fort Worth, and I remember an Oklahoma gymnast stepped out on floor. If they had one more gymnast touch the touch that sideline and step out, LSU was going to win, and it's it right. could be that close. And, and right. uh, so uh, LSU might need you might say they need a little help from Oklahoma to win. And LSU needs to be at their very best, but at the same time, uh, it's it's certainly doable for the Tigers. But they got to they got to take care of business today. You can't win the national championship today. You can only lose your, your chance at it. And you got to be one of those top two teams in your in your semifinal to advance. And that's LSU, California, Stanford, and. Uh, and Arkansas, who else, who also came out of the same regional LSU was in in Fayetteville. Top two advance. LSU and Cal, clearly the top two teams is in this regional. Stanford was unseated. Arkansas seated like 12th. And uh, LSU's two in, LSU and Cal are two and three in the country. Those are the two, two teams that should advance. But, you know, we've seen it before where, yeah, yeah, where you know, there's uh, random things happen. By the way, going, talking about last year, in last year's regional in Denver, LSU and Michigan were tied for the second spot. Denver advanced. They had to go to a tiebreaker, which meant they had to go to the sixth place scores. And you can find that video on YouTube. You see the drama of sports. You know, uh, you know, go go to that and see the reactions from the LSU team and the Michigan team when it was determined that that they uh, that it was LSU was going. And for and for a lot of gymnasts, you know, you got to remember this is a sport where there's no senior tour. That's right. Like that. You're done with collegiate gymnasts. For most of them, you're done. And, and for some of those Michigan gymnasts, their careers ended just like that. And it's uh, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And, and LSU came on here and finished fourth in the country. It was quite an achievement, but they're hoping for more this year, for sure. I, I do want to bring up uh, I, I, this. This always just sort of fascinates me. And I think it's always a good reminder to bring this up. Uh, maybe I'm being silly for doing so, but I, I really do think for the casual fan that it's, 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? It, it's it's important to just sort of serve as a reminder of just how demanding the sport of gymnastics is. And I do want to come back around. You and I were talking off air, Rab, about the 2018 uh, semifinals and championships where LSU, uh, you know, posted a, a, almost a 190, I think a 198.2 or something like that in the semifinals and had they 198.27. Uh, and had they posted that score in the championships instead of the semifinals and flip flopped the scores, it would have worked out for them. They would have won the national championship. Mm-hmm. So again, it just goes to goes to show you that hey, a little bit here, a little bit there, and who knows what might happen. But uh, before we get onto that, uh, we, we you know we talked a lot about injuries, and you, you just said that hey, look, there's no pro league and, and things of that nature. And I've said this so many times now uh, that people probably get sick of hearing it, but it's true. If there even were a pro gymnastics league, some sort of thing as a pro American, you know, the American Gymnastics League or something like that, th- most of these athletes at 22, 23, 21 years old would not be able to turn pro and continue their careers because they are already so wrecked. Their their knees, their ankles, their joints, uh, you know, all those, all the, all the things that they have to, I remember uh, this was several years ago now, Rab, if I'm not mistaken, it was Leah Finnegan, but I could be wrong, where you just sort of detailed every single injury that she'd been through. Oh, Lexi Priestman. Lexi Last, Priestman. Yes, Lexi Priestman from Cincinnati. Yeah. I'm sorry. 
Um, yeah, we just had her picture and we pointed to the different parts of her body where she'd had yeah. surgeries, you know, it almost like double operations. digits. Yeah, it but, was double digits. You know, you don't you don't think about gymnastics as being a physical grueling sport because, hey, you know, that it's it's such an it looks like such an art form. Right. But if you if you just take a, an extra pause, I mean, you know, they're doing seven twenties in the air and landing. When you when you walk, you're coming down on one foot uh, with the force equal to four times your body weight now. And so, and when you jog, you're coming down with the force equal to six times your body weight on that one foot. Now think about what they're doing <laughs> at full speed, doing flips and turns and twists and things of that nature, coming down with all the force that they're coming down with. It really is amazing uh, what these athletes do. Uh, just generally speaking on a regular basis, all the practice they have to put themselves through and they absolutely pay a price for it. I'm just, I'm just curious to see what you, you know, just a, a sort of a, a, a random rumination. I understand that, but just uh, it, it really is amazing what they put themselves through. Is it not? No, it's worth, it's worth, um, it's worth discussing. Uh, you know, like I, I spend most of my time covering college football and we spend most of our time talking about LSU football, but these are the toughest athletes I cover. And I, I'm, I'm not, I'm yes, not, I'm kidding. I'm not making that up. Uh, you know, they, they have to go out there and, and perform, you know, by, and especially by this time of the year, they've come in, the season is three and a half months long at this point, And everybody's got something that hurts. And, you know, they're dealing with, and just, just right now they're dealing with uh, monitoring uh, Haley Bryant's hamstring has been acting up. And Savannah Shane, her, who does a couple of events, a six year senior from Florida. Uh, she's, uh, She's got a shoulder that's bothering her, but they're both supposed to compete. But, you know, there's the things they're monitoring. By this point in their career, their lives, they've done gymnastics for 18 to 20 years. Y mm -hmm. You talk to any of them, and I, I love to ask them, how did you start? And a lot of them talked about, um, you know, just, you know, they were they were jumping and tumbling off the furniture. And their parents said, i got to get this kid in a, some kind of program because they're going to wreck the house. Uh, um, um uh, Christina Desiderio, a former LSU gymnast, recently departed gymnast, talked about doing doing tumble sets through uh, the restaurant when she or she'd go out to dinner with her parents. Like, we got to give this you know, some place to focus their energy. So most of them cannot remember not doing gymnastics. You know, they started a, you know, a mommy and me class or something like that at two or three, and they've they've literally done it their whole lives. And then then they get to 18, 20, 22 years old, and and it's uh it it, it it's a lot. It's it's a lot of it's a lot of pounding. It, it's it's it, you know and that and they're up there smiling with the sequins and the makeup and and their hair you know is just perfectly in place and and and, the, and they're smiling through these routines. But uh, the the smiles mask a lot. A lot masking, and masking the grittiest of gritty athletes. I'm telling you, it, it, it really I, more than one of them. I, I've heard their stories about their injuries, and uh, Lexi Priestman is one that comes to mind. Just that, you know, I forget how many surgeries, let's say at least 10, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and she came to LSU, she might have had, been, had the best resume, certainly to that point, of any gymnast who came to LSU. Uh, she, she was an Olympic contender and all that stuff, and just her injuries had mounted to the point where. She never was quite that at LSU, but I remember you just talking to her about all this, and I, I said, "You're tougher than any football player I cover, lady. That's for sure." <laughs> and, and it's and it's absolutely true. Uh, um, and uh, some, a few get through with the, only a few. Uh, Ashley Nat, uh, who, like I said, was a great yeah. LSU gymnast and is now an assistant coach, had had very you know, had a kid got through pretty unscathed in her career, but she still had a couple of things that bothered her and everything. Uh, she doesn't go tumble sets anymore in the gym, but it's, uh, they, they deserve their respect. Whether you like the gymnast, gymnastics or not, or whether you understand it or not, these athletes deserve everyone's respect because they really are tough and they really do get through, uh, some, some stuff that you, you look closely there. You know, you, you watch the, the meet Thursday or the meet Saturday and you'll see, you know, lots of tape on the ankles, the wrists are heavily, you know, heavily, uh, you know, taped or braced. You might see someone compete with a brace uh, on their knee. Say, how can they do that you know, on, on their knee? You know, with that on their knee, and uh, it, it's it's uh, it, it's it's quite something. I, I, they 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 have a lot of my respect. They they really really do, and uh, I hope people can appreciate that part. I'm, I'm glad you brought that up because it's it's worth it's worth mentioning often. So uh, so let's discuss Haley Bryant for a moment. Uh, uh, as wow. you were there uh, in Fort Worth, Texas, uh, she earned the AAI award uh, given to the top senior gymnast in the United States. Uh, I think most of the people know a little bit. Uh, most of the people tuning in know a little bit about her story. Uh, gym slam, uh, season slam and so forth uh, this year. But uh, one of the best that LSU's uh, ever had to come through here and certainly uh, essential to their success in Fort Worth. Yeah, um, she's. 
I was talking to Bob Moore, a uh, former LSU, uh, recently retired LSU assistant coach who was there a long time under D.D. Bro and, and Jay Clark. And he thinks she's the best they've ever had. And mm -hmm. it, it's hard to argue with that. <laughs> I was, it, she, uh, she, um, boy, what, what can you say about Haley Bryant? She won the AAI, AAI award, which goes to the top senior gymnast, but it's, it's as close as gymnastics has to a Heisman trophy. And uh, she's like the fourth LSU gymnast to win it. She's just had a tr tremendous season. Uh, she has only had like a handful of scores below 990. Uh, she's had eight perfect tens this year. Like I said, t 18 for her career. She she had tens on on. They start on vault usually at a home meet. Well, they always do vault and then bars. She went 10 10 on the first two events. And I looked up at the River Center and the scoreboard said Haley Bryant. 20.000. I said, that's not something you see every day. A 20, you know, <laughs> next to somebody's yeah, that's, name. No, that's right. Two, two events. And that's that was the event. Uh, that was the meet where she got the 39.925, the 40 being the, the best score you could have. So 39.925, that means she only had 0 0.075 worth of deductions uh, for the whole the whole meet. Um, she's been tremendous. She's the best gymnast in the country. Uh, she leads the nation in the all-around scoring. She leads the nation in vault. She she won both of those events at the SEC meet. She won the NCAA vault title as a freshman. And that, look, that's tough you know, to be on. You got to be on tonight. Uh, this is when the NCAA, uh, along with the teams trying to advance to the final, the NCAA individual t championships will be determined on Thursday from the two right. best scores from the two semifinals in the all-around vault, balance beam, uh, uneven bars, and, and floor exercise. So there's five individual championships at stake. And uh, so she, she certainly... Um, She's in the top 10 in all of them, you know, ranking top, but top in the country on vault and all around. And aside from that, I, I, I've said this to, 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 uh, to Jay Clark and other people at LSU. Um, you couldn't at people at LSU could not ask for an athlete to handle them, to represent their school better and to handle themselves with more class than Haley Bryant. She, she, she recognizes and accepts the role she has that, that a lot of, a lot of young athletes and fans look up to her. She's always on. She's you, you never hear any controversy. You never hear anything about any drama with her, any ego or anything like that. Um, she's she's a, she's not the most exciting quote sometimes. It's a lot of <laughs> we and us and the team and you know. And she says some of the same the minor complaint, uh, but she is. But that is nice. that. I mean, her, her focus on we, you know, on us and doing what we need to do and what we're supposed to do and worrying about that. That does sort of speak to her being a great teammate, though, and being, yeah. you know, kind of having that laser focus that you would hope your best athlete to have. I'm sorry. And she does. And she does have that. And, and I will say this, kind of wrap all this up. In an era where we have seen, we're going to look back on these these last couple of years one day and just be amazed at the, at the yeah. great athletes who have come through the LSU's campus. Two Heisman Trophy winners in the last five years. And the top two picks in last year's draft with with Skeens and Cruz in the ba in baseball draft and Angel Reese and uh, you know Mondo Duplantis is not that far removed from LSU and Shakari Richardson not that far removed from LSU. She, she will rank up there. She deserves to rank up there with any of them. She she is uh, she's the best I've seen. And I, I thought, okay, I'm gonna say that about Sarah Finnegan, who you know uh, Aaliyah's mm -hmm. older sister, who also won the AAI, AAI award. That's, that's hard for me to say. Um, but uh, she's the best, and I, and I hope for her sake, not not trying to be a fan, but I hope for her sake that she caps it off with another national, individual national title, or certainly leads LSU to a team title. I know the latter would mean more to her uh, than the uh, than than the, uh, any individual uh, awards. But uh, she deserves all the accolades, and, and I think um, you know, I just I just think I put myself in the position of her, of her parent. You know, I've talked to her dad and her mom before. I've said that you know. You'd have you have to be tremendously proud of this young lady, and and she can come back for a fifth year. Uh, yeah, she's she's kept it under wraps. Uh, I know I know uh, some people think she will, and some people think she won't. Uh, but it uh, probably depends on what they do here this weekend. I would think she can go out on a national championship note. Maybe that would uh, that would be it. But um, that you know again, that's going to be it for her. Whenever she finishes here, she's done. She's not uh, you know she's not going to the Olympic trials or anything right. like that. So unlike right. some other LSU gymnasts, but uh, she's. Uh, She's had a tremendous career, and I hope people, if they haven't ever seen her, I hope they tune in to watch her today and and probably Saturday to see what she can do because she's uh, one of the all-time great LSU athletes, not just gymnasts, all-time great LSU athletes. Uh, hold that thought for a moment as we uh, as we conduct our uh, conduct our business. This is the LSU Sports Insider. Uh, again, you know where to find Rad's great work and all our other writers' great work. That's at theadvocate.com and NOLA.com. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, support your local journalists. Uh, nobody covers LSU like the Advocate does. 
and like the advocate has. So please subscribe if you haven't already, uh, whether that's in print or digital or some combination of both. You go to theadvocate.com slash subscribe. Uh, and please subscribe to our newsletter. This is, uh, listen, you can only get gymnastics coverage in one spot. Uh, and you can uh, get the best of the best of the best delivered to your inbox, straight to your inbox, your phone, to your desktop. Uh, get all the la- latest headlines uh, all in one place. And that way you don't have to go scrounging all over the Internet. Uh, and so to do that, to sign up for the LSU, uh, excuse me, the LSU newsletter, you sign up at the advocate.com slash LSU newsletter. Uh, we are here on the LSU Sports Insider podcast every Monday and Thursday. We're here live every Monday and Thursday. Uh, we're on all our social channels, but specifically the YouTube channel, LSU Tigers on NOLA.com. If you search for LSU Tigers on NOLA.com on YouTube, you should be able to find it. You can subscribe. That way you'll catch us live every Monday and Thursday. And if you don't catch us live every Monday and Thursday, you can catch us after the fact anytime you like, uh, including uh, some of our previous episodes. Uh, Wilson Alexander and I wrapped up spring football and took a look at what the uh, what the LSU football program needed to add in the offseason. Spoiler alert, that is defensive tackle and maybe more than one defensive tackle. So uh, stay, up, stay up to date with all of our episodes there on YouTube. And if you don't uh, if you don't get your podcast on YouTube, if it's more traditional, you can you can uh, follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever other finer podcasts are found. Just search for LSU Sports Insider. Uh, I did want to mention, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Reb, not to uh, I, you've had you just made mention of world class, world class athletes who have come through here at LSU. Uh, I did want to make mention. Uh, I mean, we could start going down, you know, good ways down the list and forget several of them still. But uh, I wanted to mention when when do you suppose and this is something we're going to look up uh, as we get a little bit closer to the draft. But how many schools have four first round receivers in less than five years? I mean, these guys, you know what I'm saying? I mean, honestly, you know, what was the last time? I mean, how many how many schools would just, you know, would just give up almost everything they've got to have one first round receiver to have that kind of talent running around on campus? And so Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors are about to do exactly what Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase did in the 2020 draft. So that's something else. And like, Kyron Lacy, Kyron Lacy could join them next year. You know, he he, he might. He, he he's listen. He's he's certainly trending upward, and that was uh, that's certainly comforting. I'm sure, not only to Brian Kelly, but to uh, to the LSU fan base as well. He's he seems to be at this point uh, with a long way to go. He seems to be making the most of his opportunity. And CJ so. Daniels, a transfer. Some people say, hey, he could be the the top receiver this year. We just don't know. Xavier Thomas. I mean, one, one way or the other. Yeah. They 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 seem to have figured that position out. Yep, they, they, just, they look for everything. Parent, <laughs> I think I wrote this about ten years ago. It was like I looked up going into the season the average the team that was right in the middle average of passing. You know, the season before, and it happened to be like Tulane. Okay, the average in the country in the in the, in the FBS. It's like, what if LSU could just get to average in terms of passing? <laughs> you know, just oh, you mean from back back in the Miles era when back in the Miles era, yeah, two hundred yeah, when they couldn't complete a forward pass, thirty six yards a game or something, like, whatever it was. They were <laughs> yeah. that was right in the middle. What if they, they could average because the defense back then was really good and and the running game was was solid. And now LSU's like they've had. I, I, I was thinking this the other day. I was in the car. I was like LSU's had two Heisman Trophy winning quarterbacks. Who would have thought ten years ago? Who who would have thought that? It's when is LSU ever going to have another Heisman winner? But you had two guys, and it's become a quarterback award, obviously. So you got to be really, really studly as a quarterback, passing and 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 of course in in uh, Jaden's case, running, and then to have all these receivers to throw to. I mean, it's 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 kind of a chicken or the egg thing, but it's certainly it's certainly a uh, complimentary situation to have quarterbacks like like those two throwing to receivers like the four you mentioned. Well, I mean, look, let's go back 10 years or so. Let's go back 10 years or so. They had, they had, you know, they had Landry, they had Landry and Beckham, you know? So it's, it's, uh, enjoy, like, enjoy yeah, some the of these guys you, that come you through. You had those guys, but you, yeah. but they were still a very run heavy, uh, you know, offense back in oh, 2011. Oh, sure. Yeah. Sure. I'm thinking more of 13, mm-hmm. you know, 13, well, yeah, that, 2013. Well, 2013. Uh, anyway, we are getting off topic a little bit, but uh, just uh, just be mindful and uh, don't take for granted the number of athletes you see come through LSU and really, for that matter, through the, S- the rest of the SEC. They really are. They really are something else. I know that's kind of a no duh type of statement, but uh, it's easy to forget sometimes. It really is. When you're in the middle uh, of it, it's e- it is easy to lose. Yeah. Time. Yeah. You know. uh, well, one thing before we uh, uh, as we get back on to gymnastics here and sort of wrap that up. Uh, Haley Bryant, of course, it's uh, much has been made about the gym slam, you know, the career slam. 
and God bless her. I mean, just as you said, she may be the best that's ever come through LSU. Uh, but it, 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 I do want to bring up uh, for those who don't know that sort of the the trend that uh, it's it seems to be getting a little easier to score a perfect ten and to notch a perfect ten. Was hoping that you could just sort of explain that to the layperson, including myself, why that is and why there seem to be a uh, uh, why perfect tens seem to be a little bit more 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 common than they than they certainly were for years and years. That's a that's a great question, and 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 like like a lot of things in gymnastics, it's very subjective uh, when yes. it comes to scoring. I would say in general, it's because the gymnasts uh, do more and more difficulty than they used to do. You know, now you remember, I'm trying to be as concise as possible. You got to remember collegiate gymnasts compared to international gymnastics, which you'll see this summer at the Olympics in Paris, two very different scoring systems in gymnastics is a, in college gymnastics, it's a 10 0, you know, 10 0 is the max, so yeah, the, a perfect 10. And they used to be like that internationally. Now it's an open ended scoring system. So you could have a score of 14.375 when you see Simone Biles or something like that. So is that good? You know, is, you know how good is that, you know, compared to right. somebody else? It's kind of hard to define, and I think I think international gymnastics has done themselves no favors by doing that. You know, everyone you knows what a, you, you, you're confusing the layperson. It, yeah, you know. everybody knows what a perfect ten is, right? It, you right. Know, and and it, you know you you see it, but but that said, in international gymnastics, you just build add difficulty upon difficulty, and you're like, well, she didn't hit the landing. I know, but she did so many difficult things in the air on the way to that landing. It's uh, it, it it's that's why the the high score. In, in college gymnastics, you got to do it all. You have to do the, the, the difficulty and stick the landing to get a, a perfect 10. And I think, I think judges are, are tr the trend has been that judges are being more wowed by the difficulty that people do. Again, watch Haley and let she, uh, uh, Haley Van Lith. I'm confusing my Haley's here. <laughs> oh uh, my uh, goodness. Haley Van Lith. Uh, breaking uh, breaking news. news. Yeah. Actually, actually, there is breaking news. Our, our Reed Darcy is saying she's uh, reportedly going to TCU, so here in Fort Worth. So okay, so well, there yeah. is that uh, happening while we're recording this. So uh, it's quite interesting since I'm since I'm here across town uh, from from that from TCU's campus. But um, you, the, I think I think judges are are more wowed by the all the difficulty they do. Uh, Haley Bryant does like these blind landings and stuff. She'll yes when she does bars, she'll flip around to the last instant and turn around in a, and land. And try to try to just nail that perfectly, and uh, you get so I, I like I've seen I've seen a lot of her tins, okay, you know, and some of them are more perfect than others. I've seen her, and frankly, and not to pick on her certainly because she's obviously as we said she's tremendous. I've seen her do bars where she didn't get completely to vertical. You're supposed to get straight up and down vertical on on top of the on top of the bar, and I've seen her be just a little bit like, and she still get a ten because. But I think she, I think her gymnastics and her. Her, her skill set has such a momentum that it just kind of sweeps them up. Now I'll say that in most meets and meets during the regular season, you have two judges per event at SECs and at uh, regionals. And here you have four judges per event. So it's harder to get a 10. That's that said, we've still seen 10s. Uh, Leah Finnegan had a 10 on floor in the Fayetteville regional. Connor McLean had a 10 on beam at the SEC championships. So you still see it. And, and, and Connor McLean's beam <laughs> when she's on, it's it's one of the best in the, in the world. It, it's world yes. renowned, as Jay said. So, uh, but that's why I think I think it's the the more and more difficulty the gymnasts do compared to you know 10, 15, 20 years ago that that the, the judges kind of give them credit for when maybe they give them a little too much credit at times. So Oklahoma to, uh, to wrap up, uh, you know, we again no guarantees, but we expect that LSU is going to make it through to the championship round uh, on Saturday. And Oklahoma will make it through, and Oklahoma will be the favorite. What has to happen? We've touched on this a little bit. But what has to happen uh, and for LSU to be able to, you know, sort of notch that upset? Um, you know, whether that's, you know, just sort of the, the team score to end all team scores, you know, the bet one of the best they've ever posted, things of that nature. But also, uh, what makes Oklahoma so difficult? to overcome. And I know you and I have talked about this a little bit, but, you know, they're, they're starting to take, you know, 5% criticism uh, for sort of the way they perform. And I was hoping you that, that you could sort of uh, just sort of give that to us in late terms as well. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're tremendous. I, I like in Oklahoma women's gymnastics to, um, to John Curtis in football, you know, they're not real flashy. That's a, that's a great, yeah, analogy. Yeah, they're, they're not real flashy, but what they do, they do it extremely well. 
they just they right. just execute and they and they and they just do it with such great consistency. And look, they they're they're tre- they're tremendous. Uh, they they've got some great gymnasts. They they've been they've been great all year long. Um, they they uh, yeah, they had a they had a one ninety eight nine five zero in the Big Twelve Championships, which is un. As, as it's almost, almost 199. It's, it's almost it's, supernatural. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and they've got um, they've got three, four, four, gym, four all-arounders ranked in the top 13, led by Jordan Bowers, who we, we put her in the five gymnasts to watch today. She's number two in the country behind Haley Bryant and the all-around. Faith Torres, Catherine Levasseur, Audrey Davis. They just keep coming at you and coming at you, and they just they just stick their landings. Now a lot of people, the, the critics of Oklahoma, say they don't do quite as much. Uh, was much flair as an LSU. Not as daring. Yeah, and as daring. And they've kind of they kind of created this trend that I think is unfortunate in gymnastics of teams instead of on floor and LSU's number one in the country on floor. Oklahoma's number two um, of teams doing two pass uh, tumbling routines on floor instead of three. Well, obviously, three more things more things can be look great, but more things can go wrong. And uh, you see, most of LSU's gymnasts will only do two tumbling passes now, and that's because of Oklahoma. They kind of started that trend, and, and as Jay Clark said, it, it, you know, gymnastics should always be pushing the envelope. And in some cases, they're not. And this is one case where even LSU has given in to the let's be let's be you know consistent, and, mm-hmm. and, and instead of being uh, as flashy as possible. Well, that, that's why they're good. They have they have excellent gymnasts. They their their yeah, their stuff is is very good, but it just doesn't it doesn't wow you as much as as an LSU does or 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 a Florida. Or, or you know, or some of these, some of the, uh, Utah when they're really good, you know, some of these other teams. So, but, but I expect, you know, and, and look, I'll say this too, they got a tough semifinal. LSU got the better draw of their semifinal because you have an unseen well, Stanford team in theirs. I was about to say, go go through that if you would, with Florida and Utah. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's say LSU, Arkansas, California, and Stanford. LSU is the two seed. Cal, Cal is the three. Arkansas is the ten. I think they had the twelfth best average of the season. But they were the ten seed coming into the tournament, and Stanford is unseeded. In the other semifinal, the evening that, semifinal. That's that's session one, which begins session one at, at three thirty. At three three thirty to the, oh, at three thirty yeah. Thursday. Yes, Thursday. I'm sorry. This session is session two. two. Eight o'clock. Oklahoma is number one. Florida number four. Utah number five. Alabama number eight. A very good team is getting left out of, uh, or two very good teams are getting left out of that semifinal. Like I said, it should be LSU in California if they do their gymnast gymnastics right, uh, advancing to the final. But boy, you could say Florida or Utah, Alabama. Probably a little bit below them, but they can. They they've hit 198 this season. Um, uh, but but you know, f- you know, Oklahoma, Florida, Utah, somebody's getting left out. But and boy, if if it could happen, parent, that uh, Oklahoma has a ha- has to count a fall or something like that, and Florida and Utah are really on, and they don't make it through, boy, the door is open for LSU if they it's, advance. It's, it's to, on to win yeah. it. Yeah, you know. So so watch for that too. I don't expect that to happen, but but again, it's gymnastics and and, and mistakes can can happen, but. Uh, but they're they're a tremendous team, tremendously consistent. For LSU to win the national championship, like I said, they got to get to the final. Oklahoma's got to be a little off, you know. They, yeah, LSU's got to score something in over one ninety eight, you know, something you know, probably well above one ninety eight. And Oklahoma's going to have to have they have to count, you know, something that's not great, a, a, a you know, nine seven seven five in one of their events or something like that, something just a little bit sloppy off. sloppy landing. And uh, right. LSU's got to be on with their best gymnasts. They've, had, you know, along with Haley Bryant, they've had three other gymnasts have to have ten perfect tens this season. Haley has had the most, obviously. Connor McLean has had tens on bars and beam. Uh, remember, she won the twenty twenty two U.S. Nationals title before she came to LSU. That's the title that Simone Biles won last year and likely won again this year. Uh, but she won the national all-around title. Very impressive. Um, and then uh, and then uh, Kaya, Kaya Johnson set a 10 on floor. And Aaliyah Finnegan's had three 10s on floor. Aaliyah Finnegan, to me, is the uh, the X factor for LSU. She's been up a little bit. She's been down at times. She She's had some had some falls and some, some, some wobbles. But when she's on, Especially on floor and beam, she can deliver some really great scores. And LSU needs her to be on to win the national championship because you expect those other three to be pretty darn good: Bryant, uh, Kai Johnson, and, and Connor McLean. But uh, you, they need Aaliyah Finnegan to give them that extra score because Oklahoma's got, like I said, four all-arounders who are really, really top-notch. Okay, so let's uh, let's shift the focus a little bit uh, here just to sort of close out uh, close out today's episode. Um, you of course uh, were at, as far as you were concerned, the happiest place on earth. Even though I know you're a Disney guy, uh, the happiest Close. place on earth for you is Augusta National. 
Um, so I, I understand that this is, you know, obviously an LSU podcast, but uh, I just wanted to ask you about, you know, some of sort of your reflections on you've been to what, 17 masters now. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so of it, listen, everybody, any, anybody who's ever bought, I count myself among these. I, it's very rare that I'll watch golf on a weekend on a given weekend, you know, but everybody stops and watches the masters. Right? Uh, right. We will get to Sam Burns and why we think he has not, you know, done as well as maybe he should have or could have uh, in Augusta. But uh, first things first, long before Vern Lundquist was known as the voice of the SEC broadcast on CBS he was known, among many other things, of course, uh, many years doing the Cowboys broadcast. But, of course, uh, his voice and his presence uh, at the Masters was uh, a given. And it was, uh, you almost come to depend on it. Yeah, you almost come to depend on it. You knew he was going to be there, uh, that that, boom, that big booming voice was going to be there uh, on CBS. And, of course, we all remember the yes, sir call, and among many others, uh, in 86 when Nicholas won it. Uh, just wanted to get sort of, I don't know, three, five minutes worth of reflection on uh, on Uncle Vern. Yeah, this was his last Masters. This was the last thing he did. You know, he, he stopped doing SEC football after the 2016 season. It doesn't seem that long ago, but it, it, it was. And then he was just doing a little, uh, he was doing basketball for all the NCAA tournament. He'd do it to like the regional final. And then he stopped doing that. He was just doing golf. The, CBS has the Masters and the PGA Championship. And uh, he even called, uh, remember a couple of years ago when Phil Mickelson at 50 won the PGA Championship at Kiowa Island, he, he uh, Phil pitched in out of a bunker for a birdie and he was calling that hole. You know, so it's like Vernon, uh, great calls, just follow Vernon Lundquist around. Vernon Lundquist, yeah. did, he did the Duke Kentucky regional final back in the early 90s, which is still to me the best college basketball game I've ever seen. Um, he did, uh, he did Jackie course, Smith, the, Jackie Smith. He was doing the Cowboys radio. Then he's the sickest man in the world. Jackie Smith from Northwest Northwestern state dropped the touchdown pass in the end zone. And they lost to the Steelers in Super Bowl 13. And of course, Nicholas's, uh, birdie putt at 17, the yes, sir. That was just perfectly timed with Nicholas pumping his fists like that. And of course, Tiger Woods, uh, famous chip in on 16 in 2005. Uh, the ball just trickling into the cup with the last roll. Mm -hmm. Let's see the Nike swoosh just disappear. And, uh, and so this was his last year, and I, I had a I had a personal moment, if I if I may say so. You know, I've, I've gotten to know Vern, you know, over, over the years, uh, from from his days calling SEC football. And Sunday, I went out on the course because uh, you got to watch when the leaders tee off. You pretty much have to watch it in the from the press building on TV to make sure you don't miss anything. And so, uh, so I went out on the course for a couple hours to walk around, and I, I was over there by Butler Cabin where they do the the green jacket ceremony. And Vern was getting into a little golf cart with his wife to uh, go out to, to 16 and uh, and people were walking by you walk past butler cabin to go to the front of the clubhouse to get your picture taken they have these four stations for, where they'll take people's pictures for free you know and you know they just give you a little card and you develop it when you get home or get it you know get it printed and people were walking by and they saw him and they just start cheering we love you Vern. thank you Vern. they're clapping for it. they're literally uh, applauding him and it was a really nice moment and there was a security guard right there by the little rope and i said uh, could, could I go? Would you mind if I go in and say hello to him? I really do know him. <laughs> I explained, you know, where I was from and where I come. He said, "Okay, don't tell anybody." <laughs> so, so I go over there, and I just, I, parent, I, 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 some people like Vern Lundquist, some people don't. But I, I got to admit, I was, I got a little choked up, and I, 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 all I could say was, "Vern, I hope you have a great day. I just hope you have a great day." And uh, you know, and he was very nice. And I said, "I know everybody's pulling at you this weekend. You know, you know." Just trying to you know to to get a piece of you. You know he was on the golf channel talking about this, and he was on yep. CBS talking about that. But it was just I, I don't know. It was it meant a lot to me, and uh, and you could tell he appreciated all the applause. And I, I mean, people have seen it's on YouTube as well. The video when Tiger Woods came through uh, 16 in the final round, he stopped and, and shook hands with Vern Lundquist because uh, they have that they share that that experience. You know for you know that you piece know, of history. That sure, piece of history. Together. Yeah. Yeah, and that was really cool to see, and obviously uh, very gracious, and um, and uh, you know very very nice of Tiger Woods to do that. I'm sure it meant a lot to Vern, and it, it, he's a, yeah he's um, he's one of the one of the great voices, and there've been a lot of great ones at uh, you know, calling. Yeah, you know, CBS has done the Masters every year; it's been on television. It's the longest running contract in sports since sports 53? 56. Is that right? Fifty six. Excuse me, and they're, they're on year to year, supposedly. Right. <laughs> on a year but they'll, to year but they'll never. I mean, unless unless CBS collapses or something. I mean, just, yeah. just the Masters are, is never going to go anywhere else. I mean, yeah, exactly. A, it's one of their a, crown an institution jewels. that loves its traditions more than anything else. And, I, and, I would just say it, that I'm, I'm yeah. sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Go, and it just it dovetails perfectly. They get done with the NCAA tournament and then a basketball tournament, and then they go to the Masters. It just 
is one of the best parts of the year for them. Uh, and I'm sure, as you know, uh, I'm sure you probably know this, probably knew this before I did. The whole reason that the Masters is at the time of year that it was, was that uh, for decades upon decades, of course, all the writers, all the columnists from the Northeast were down at spring training in Florida. And uh, the right. Masters timed it, timed that event, timed their event uh, so that the writers would catch catch the tournament on their way back up to the Northeast. So exactly right. It was in late yeah, March, started. actually, uh, you know, right yeah. before opening day. The first few masters were in, in late March. And um, yeah, Grantland Rice, the great sports writer, was one of the uh, founding members of Augusta National. In fact, he, he helped you know, get people to, to come. There's a great piece online by, uh, I think, the guy named David Owen, if you search for it, about the early years of the masters and how it's the, the club, you know, it was founded in the Depression, right? In the height of the Depression, right. 1933. It, was, it really struggled to survive those early years. They couldn't even pay their water bill to the city of Augusta at one wow. point. And now they're building. Now they can pay for the city of Augusta. Yeah, they, 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 they <laughs> want the group of roads so they could extend the fifth hole. We'll pay for it. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, they said this year uh, they're building underground parking for the players next, for, between now and next year's tournament. So they're going to build an underground parking garage between tournaments. Okay? <laughs> yeah. Just they got a little bit of money. Augusta National is Augusta National is comprised of the people who run the country. That's right. I mean, that's, that's right. that, it, that really it really is that simple. So but they, they've when, got a little bit. They've got a, they've got some spare change between. When they decide to do something, they do it. They built the press building we have, which is a fifty thousand square foot building between the twenty sixteen and twenty seventeen Masters. They just worked around the clock. And it was like it's like it was always been there. Once once we got back there, you gotta have and, you gotta have a little bit of coin to have enough manpower to to pay for enough manpower to do that. Uh, real quickly uh, before we before we wrap this up, Sam Burns, uh, you know, just has not done as you know certainly all the potential in the world. He's certainly made his mark uh, here and there. Uh, has has not done has not well certainly didn't do well. Uh, you know, this year and recently. What uh, what what do you make of the former LSU golfer Sam Burns? What do you make of this? And do you ever expect him to be, uh, you know, on the leaderboard as they hit the back nine on Sunday? Yeah, Sam missed the cut at the Masters this year uh, in three appearances. He was missed the cut. I think he was tied for 29th last year. Missed the cut. Uh, it's really puzzling because he he his best finish in any major is a tie for 20th in the PGA Championship a couple of years ago, and he's never really been in you know, he's never been in that mix. You know, the back nine on Sunday at the, at the Masters or the U.S. Open or any of them, and it's puzzling because. He's got all the tools that you would want to be a major champion. He hits it long. He's got a great short game and putting game. Uh, he's uh, he he can go really low, and he's got this even temperament. You know, Sam is one of those guys. He doesn't get too high or too low. Not that that's a requirement, but it it, it helps in golf. You he, he doesn't get too high or too low. And this year, you know, he had the special circumstance. He and Scotty Scheffler are good friends. So Scotty won the Masters again this year, and they shared a house together. And uh, both their wives are pregnant, uh, they, you know, and they both said they were going to leave the Masters if mm -hmm. their wives uh, went into labor. And, and uh, Sam's wife was due this week. I have not heard if they've had the baby or not. But so he he was probably not entirely disappointed to be able to head home and, and be with her. Scotty's wife is due later this week, and he's playing in the Heritage at, uh, at uh, Hilton Head, South Carolina, right now. Which I but, just can't believe. But I know he went on. home. He, he came home to Dal He lives here in Dallas, and he came home here. And then he, I guess, dropped off the green jacket and <laughs> went, to, went to the Heritage, um, and uh, with uh, with your favorite guy, Ted Scott, on the bag. There, uh, that's right. Four Masters right. wins for Lafayette native Ted Scott. Uh, you you uh, do have to give it to him. You do have to give it to him. He's obviously hey, that's, that's, made it. That's, and that's I thought, one off the record. That's one off the yeah. record. Yeah, and I but, and, uh, and, but I and you saw that Scotty Scheffler. I'm sorry, but you saw that Scotty Scheffler made it a point to make sure that Ted Burn Ted, Ted Burns. That uh, Ted Scott got his got his moment, so to speak, you know, as they're as they're coming up on eighteen. Yeah, he did, Cause especially since his you know his wife wasn't there to share with him. His family, his parents were there and everything. But but it, it, it all he's he hadn't won a tournament before he got together with Ted, and now he's he's number one in the world and won two Masters and two players and and you know all his wins are since then. But but going back to Sam Burns. I don't know what is I I got I got to feel it's going to be a little bit of a mental thing by by now, you know that, that no. just like. You, can, you just got to break the, what, what do they talk about? The pressure barrier. I remember Skip Bertman, you know, would talk about something like the pressure barrier and, and he's going to just do it. And once he does it, I think he'll be, it was like when Phil Mickelson, I can't Phil Mickelson would have made That's a, you know? That was exactly what I was going to bring up. Phil Mickelson was 33 when he finally broke through because it was year after year after year after year of, yeah. you know, quote unquote failure at the masters. And he won in 2004 on Easter Sunday at 33 years old. And let's remember that Sam Burns is only 27. 
right. uh, you know, and you can you can do this for a long but, way. You know, of course, you start to slide a little bit, you know, as you get yeah. into your late thirties and things of that nature. But but he's it, got a long way to go. Done. He's got he's a got lot of time left to be in his prime. It, That's right. it, it's he's got to really feel it because this year, like the last couple of years, he and, and Scotty Scheffler have shared a rental house in Augusta for the Masters. And there was a funny story this year. Tuesday night, uh, Sam Burns said his Sam's caddy was making cooking some steaks. And Scotty's like, "Oh, y'all cooking steak tonight? I got to go to this dinner." He had to go to the Champions Dinner. And Sam's like, yeah, "I don't feel sorry for you. <laughs> I don't feel bad for you." Okay? That's a good story. And so um, to see one of your best friends. Uh, have all this success and you're still trying to, and he's won tournaments. Like he's, you know, he won the world match play last year and in, in Austin and he's, you know, won, won a lot of, you know, so, you know, five or six tournaments on the PGA tour has had an excellent start to his career, but just, you know, the majors are what everyone's judged by. Right. You know, um, that's right. It, 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 that, you know, in the, even in this, this fractured era of the PGA tour versus live golf, they, the best players still come together for, for the, uh, for the majors. And, and that's what everyone's judged by. And, and, uh, I, I I I just think I think he's going to win one eventually, at least one eventually. I just think he's too good and too uh, too talented. And I think anyone around know, who's followed LSU golf will say that he's just got to break through and do it. And um, and maybe seeing Scotty Scheffler have all the success will will renew his efforts. But his life's about to change too, right? He's going to have a child. As, 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 as parents, we know your life changes, and uh, for for top level uh world class athletes uh it's it's a huge change so uh you know change, we'll see it changes uh, for better uh, and worse that's right that's right <laughs> but but uh, you know I, I i certainly had i think he can do it he, he's still very young and like you said phil yes. mickelson it was several years beyond you know where sam is now before he won a major and then he won uh won won three masters a british open and two pgas you know six majors which is a, a, a tremendous career so uh hopefully he can do it eventually be, for his sake because he really he really does have everything you want to, to be a major champion. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I was going to uh, also tack on a little bit of ba a baseball topic here, but uh, we're we're running late. And frankly, I'm not so sure that uh, that the LSU fan base at the moment has the stomach to uh, to do that. We'll see how they do uh, with the three game series on the road at Missouri in Columbia, a, a team a Missouri team that. Uh, look for everything like the worst team in the SEC and maybe one of the worst teams of all time in the SEC. And looks like they're starting to turn it around under Carrick Jackson, the first year coach, former Southern coach as well. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. And nothing it's is, so hard, listen, right? nothing is given, right? Yeah. They scored something that, like, some, I, I should know this on, on the, off the top of my head, but I think it was 23 runs against Florida uh, past weekend. So, uh, and if you're LSU, you're not in a position to take anybody for granted. So, uh, they've got work to do. They've got lots and lots and lots of work to do, and they may have dug themselves too deep a hole already, but we shall see. Uh, Rad, we will wrap it up here. Uh, if you would, bring me back a two taco combo from Taco Cabana. I like the torn chicken. I like a little nice salsa verde. Uh, on the, yeah, okay, good. With the chips and the queso. Uh, I know that makes me a sicko for everybody who's listening in Texas because there are taquerias on every corner. Uh, and hey, Karen, I'm going to write that down. Because I'm saying it uh, 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 as the as the great sports writer Dave Kindred said, I cover things the old-fashioned way with a notebook and a pen stolen from a Marriott. So uh, <laughs> that's the way. That's, <laughs> a, a, hey, that's a tradition unlike any other, right, right there. So that's right. Uh, but anyway, we will wrap it up here. Uh, we appreciate uh, everybody tuning in and listening. Uh, again, we are here every Monday and Thursday on the LSU Sports Insider uh, on all our social channels, but specifically the YouTube channel LSU Tigers on NOLA.com. Uh, search for LSU Tigers on NOLA.com on YouTube. You should be able to find it, should be able to subscribe. You'll catch us live. And if you don't catch us live, you can catch us after the fact anyway. Uh, and if you don't catch us uh, on YouTube, you can always catch us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever other finer podcasts are found. Uh, so please look us up. And of course, uh, subscribe to The Advocate. Listen, nobody else is covering the LSU gym, uh, gymnastics team and their quest for a national championship. Uh, like The Advocate, nobody else is on site. Uh, to do so, and nobody covers LSU like the Advocate from top to bottom, and and uh, that's always been the case and always will be. So please subscribe to the Advocate. Go to theadvocate.com slash subscribe, and subscribe to our newsletter as well. Get uh, everything delivered straight to your inbox. Uh, you can go to theadvocate.com slash LSU newsletter. Uh, Rab, it's been a pleasure, as always. Uh, get some sleep if you can. I know you will enjoy uh, getting off the road once you actually do for a change. Uh, and then we will try to uh, to gear up for, uh, well, I guess maybe the next road trip 
the next road trip would maybe be the SEC baseball tournament, but hey, maybe uh, not. <laughs> I guess we'll find not. out. Got the Zurich we'll Classic. Soon got, the, got the Zurich, Zurich Classic. classic. That's right. That'll yes. be fun. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, we will uh, we will wrap it up here, but we appreciate everybody tuning in. For Scott Rabelais, I am Perrin Keys. This has been the LSU Sports Insider.